finally, a me for me. It's been driving me crazy. The last Xiaomi I spent time with was the Mi 9. And before that, I only kind of dabbled with a few different phones at Pocket Now. For all the major labels that I've gotten to play with, Xiaomi is the brand I have the least familiarity with. Well, the folks on their PR team took a little pity on me and sent over a Mi 11 Lite for me to test drive and share some of my thoughts. And it does not disappoint. Those of you more familiar with the brand are gonna have to pardon that I'm just getting up to speed. So I recently just published a video on the Moto Ace, and I've been very pleased with phones from TCL and the Nord N10, the budget-friendly options that are decently powerful. And they all fit a common aesthetic. LCDs with rounder and thicker plastic backs, maybe not the most exciting for being so similar to each other, but eminently capable daily driver smartphones. Geekbench wouldn't spit out a score during this embargo period, but running a video render test were faster than an N10, but slower than a Pixel 5 and an LG Velvet. If you're not trying to produce complex 4K video projects on your phone, I think we can call this plenty of performance. You're probably gonna be fine because there's always a danger when we get overly fixated on the processor. It's easy for techies to forget that there's a whole phone connected to that chip. And immediately the manufacturing on this phone makes a really nice impression. You've heard me making fun of reviewers, filling videos with, it feels really nice in the hand. All phones do. The Mi 11 Lite fits a nicer aesthetic than those aforementioned more budget-friendly phones. First, just how shockingly thin this thing is. If you put the Mi 11 Lite in the bumper case that's included in the box, it's the same size as a naked Nord N10, and it's thinner than the TCL 10 and Moto Ace. You're not gonna get much thinner outside of a Surface Duo. One of the main things that I need to get up to speed on are the variations between Poco, Redmi, and the Mi branding. The Poco approaching more of a flagship killer conversation, the Mi 11 feels more streamlined and a touch more elegant. We got a snappy 90 Hertz OLED. This contributes to a more fluid feel throughout the UI. And I adore the raised power button fingerprint sensor. This is quick. And if I can't have a rear fingerprint, I greatly prefer this over in display. Solid stereo speakers on tap. Though I would have liked to see a headphone jack. I'm always gonna gripe about headphone jacks. And who would have thought in current year, I would find it so refreshing to see the option for dual SIM or a memory card. We can expand the storage via a memory card. If you like features, make sure to vote with your wallets. Rounding out the hardware, we've got a solid camera on tap. Now this camera app is feature rich and I'm always stoked to see modes, not just for vlogging and video, but also dual camera support. Capturing from the front and rear at the same time is, is something that I'm doing a bit more of, especially as I'm chasing after my daughter. The main camera sensor here is a 64 megapixel pixel binning down to 16 megapixel JPEGs and output is sharp. Leave the HDR mode off and we're in great shape to capture active kid shots with almost zero shutter lag. I do wish the HDR setting was persistent. It seems to reset every time you open and close the camera app, but output and performance are more than competitive. Good 4K video, good night mode. The macro could be a little bit stronger, but these five megapixel sensors are at least usable for some good close-up shots. And you know, I'm gonna be stoked to see a pro mode with not only focus peaking, but zebra striping. I'm not sure I've seen zebra stripes in any other stock camera app. That's really cool. All in a camera app layout that handles the phone screen area really well. We might lack some of the horsepower features like 8K video, but the core camera here is very good. And there are some fun and unique features to play with. Which brings me to the software, and that's where there's a bit more of that culture shock. The good thing, aggressive skinning doesn't seem to hold back modern phones at all these days. I still have nightmares about the olden days of choppy performance and stutter and jank. This is probably the bounciest 
friendliest skin I've ever used. Not just for a visual layout, but also how sound effects and haptics are applied throughout the phone. Really fun little touches, like say you wanna remove several icons from your home screen in one shot. Oh. Bubble pops! How often are people going to do that on their phones where a software engineer was tasked with building that animation and applying sound effects? See, those details matter in building a cohesive UI. Too often in the past, a skin like this would feel incongruous with the rest of Android. It would just be tacked on and then obnoxiously altered for things like notifications and how your settings are arranged. And those elements would mismatch. You'd run into bubbly round edges in one place and then stock Android somewhere else. This is a huge leapfrog because I haven't been along for the iterative ride from year to year year watching MIUI evolve. And this is significantly more complete than previous iterations of this skin. The only concern I have with this level of software integration, the number of times you crash out of Android and encounter ads or manufacturer specific apps and notifications. I played one of the pre-installed games and then I started getting a lot of notification spam. If you aren't paying attention to the full end user licensing agreement and all the services you sign up for as you set the phone up, you get an ad after installing apps through Google Play. I know there's a whole subculture of folks who know what's up here. Every permutation of MIUI software, where all the gotchas are, and what custom ROMs to flash to clear things out. But this out-of-the-box experience matters too, because I have some hopes for this brand making more inroads in North America. This phone, this hardware gets me really excited. We're starting to get better competition in the two to $400 range. The opportunities to take mid-ranger a little more upscale. Phones are only fun when we've got good players battling back and forth, offering actual differences, and not just copying a market leader and then trying to undercut on price. That's not competition, that's lame. If I want an iPhone, I'll buy an iPhone. If I want something different, I want something different. Xiaomi just recently won an important court battle that might reopen some potential for this label to do more business in the United States. Spending some time with the Mi 11 Lite, this is a phone that might interest more consumers here. I'll of course leave some links down below for more information on the Mi 11 Lite. Hopefully this is a label I'll get to spend a bit more time with. I'd really like to be familiarizing myself more with these products. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel, Supporting your favorite content creators has never been more critical than it is today. So I greatly appreciate those of you who are uh, checking out the links in the description down below. Maybe you're shopping a little merch. That kind of stuff really does help keep production rolling on this channel. You can catch a full list of all my affiliates and partnerships on somegadgetguy.com, or you might consider, just maybe, joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash some gadget guy. This list is basically a collection of the coolest tech pals on the internet. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the web at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch and the Facebooks and the Instagrams. And I will catch you all on the next review.